Well, good morning, everyone. Christ is risen. Oh, good job. We are uh, in the Easter season, which actually is six weeks long. So we get, we'll have a lot of practice with that one. But uh, the church uh, is reminding us each and every week of the season that we are a resurrection people, that we are the ones that carry God's joy into the world uh, with the risen Christ. So we'll, we'll get a lot of chance to practice that over the next six weeks. Uh, but welcome. We're glad that you um, have come on this wonderful, beautiful, snowy spring Sunday. Um, and for those who are joining us on YouTube, again, welcome. We are glad that you have joined us. And we hope that this time together will ground us in God's amazing love and grace and peace. Just a few announcements before we begin our worship today. Um, we are in a new season of the liturgy, so we have a new uh, bulletin out there on the front so um, if you didn't grab one no worries it's going to be up on the screen so um, and we will be using the um, ELW which is the cranberry book in your pews today for our baptism of Lincoln who's kind of sleeping up here in the front so we'll just kind of be quiet no <laughs> but, but we're so thankful for uh, family and friends who are able to be here to celebrate uh, that baptism. We actually have three weeks of baptisms in this Easter season, so um, we'll be getting a lot of use with this uh, font up here. So we're excited about that. So welcome to all of you. Um, if you are uh, needing the nursery for some wiggly time, uh, the nursery is open, so please feel free to utilize that. Uh, usually about five and under would be helpful, but um, if you have some little older wigglers, um, let us know and we can, we can help out with that. Um, also, if you would take a moment to uh, find your connection pad, which is in the pew, it's that little black pad. If you'd sign your name, pass it down, um, and let us know if you have any prayer requests. It uh, helps us know who's here, but also it gives you a chance to know who you're sitting next to as we uh, continue with our worship today. As I said, uh, this Easter season is six weeks long. We're going to go through mid-May with uh, the stories of Jesus' resurrection and what that means for us. And so the joy, the hope, the peace that is this Easter season hopefully will find you wherever you are in your faith walk this morning. And so with that, I would invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that sustain the land and people around us from age to age, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on your journey as we share your life and love. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. And we open with Now the Green Blade, Blade Rises, ELW 379 this morning. <laughs>
Sing praise to God, you faithful. Give thanks to God's holy name. Let us rejoice and be glad. Weeping may linger for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let us rejoice and be glad. You turn our weeping into dancing. God, you remove the garments of mourning and clothe us in gladness. Let us rejoice and be glad. May we praise you and not be silent. We will give you thanks to you, O God, forever. Let us rejoice and be glad. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts and our minds for the scripture. Good morning. <clears throat> the first lesson is from Acts, and this is after Jesus has risen. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> and the second lesson is from uh, 1 John. He's the letter, the short letter he writes to the people many years after this resurrection. <clears throat> we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself was in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. 
My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please, please stand for our gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to John. Now when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails on his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children to come on up for a time with Paul this morning. Ooh, and it looks like he's got something fun. Yeah, uh, if the kids want to come and just have a seat, right? Come on. Come over here. Everybody, come have a seat. Well, we'll let everybody get here for a minute. It's so good to see you guys. How's everybody doing today? Good? What do I got here? Lunchbox. Lunchbox. Think it's, you think it's my lunchbox? Why not? It's probably Emma's, yeah? Yeah, it's, I don't know why this was in my office today, but I, I'm using it to show you to a point. What do you think's in my lunchbox? Food, that's a really good guess. That normally is what would be in a lunchbox, right? Does anybody else have a guess what's in my lunchbox? Water, that's another great thing that would go in a lunchbox. I have a question. How many would you believe me in this little bag if I told you I have a basketball? You, Brandon, you, you, you know I'm a tricker, so you might believe me. Yeah? Is anybody, anybody else, is it hard to believe that this would have a basketball in it? Yeah? Do you think so? How many of you, raise your hand if you think it's hard to believe there's a basketball in here? Yeah? So you're saying you doubt that I could put a basketball in my lunchbox? Well, let's see. 
oh, wait a minute. What if I told you not only is there a basketball, but Batman's in my lunchbox? <laughs> and Spider-Man. What do you think? Am I telling the truth? Raise your hand if you think I'm not telling the truth. Yeah, not telling the truth. No basketball, no Batman. What if I said also, of all the unbelievable things I could think of, there was a $2 bill in my lunchbox? <laughs> do you think so? Y yeah, is that hard to believe? A $2 bill could fit, right? But the rest of it, all right, well, let's see what's in my lunchbox here. You ready? All right, call it out as I hold it up. $2 bill. They still make those, actually. It's crazy. All right, what else did I say I had in here? What else did I say? I said Batman and Spider-Man. There's Batman. He's orange for some reason. Yeah. And... Spider-Man. There he is. They all fit in my little bag. Did you believe it? Do you, how many of you now think it's hard to believe that I have all that stuff in my bag? Do you believe me now? Once you saw it, it was easy to believe. And I, di I did a little trick, because this is not a normal size basketball, but I didn't say mini basketball, but it's, I still told the truth, right? Basketball. Well, today in Sunday school, we're going to learn about one of the disciples named Thomas. And I think Thomas gets a bad rap because at the beginning of the story, all of the disciples are hiding and they're afraid. And they don't believe that Jesus has risen. But Thomas, we, 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 we choose him out because he, for whatever reason, wasn't with them the first night. And all the disciples say, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. He's alive. He's, he's risen. And Thomas says, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Just like it was hard to believe that I would have a basketball in my bag. Thomas couldn't believe because that was such an unbelievable thing. But then, and he said, the only way I'll believe is if I see Jesus. And um, have you, any of you guys ever seen Jesus? In a book, yeah. Maybe in a picture. But that we don't really even really know what Jesus looked like, right? We, we can guess. But yeah, we have like that painting up there. That's, but none of us have actually seen G Jesus, right? Yet we believe in him. And so when Thomas sees Jesus and he touches his hands and his side, he believes, and Jesus says, blessed are those who, who believe in me but have never seen me. And that's us today, except that we can see Jesus through other people. We can be Jesus to other people when we take care of them and when we share God's good news with them. Is that cool? Should we go learn more about how to do that in Sunday school? All right, let's do it. <laughs> So, can you believe that I can get you to say things without you even knowing it? We're going to try this. Christ is risen. Okay, that was pretty good. How about um, light shines in the darkness? Okay, that's pretty good too. How about this one? The peace of Christ be with you all. See, look at that. You guys know that. You didn't even need prompters. You're so in tune with what this story is all about. How many of you love sharing the peace? Okay, okay. So I love this gospel story, especially on the second Easter Sunday, because it is where we get this story and this part of our liturgy of sharing the peace with one another. Now, for some of you, the peace is that anxiety time when your introverted self goes, no, I don't want to talk to anybody. For some of you extroverted people, you're like, yes, I get to go around and say hi to everybody. For some of you, it's, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. What are we doing for brunch? That's not what that part of the liturgy is all about. It is about us receiving Christ's peace. But We'll get to that in a second. What I love about this gospel story is not that Thomas was called a doubter, and I think Paul's right, he gets a bad rap. But what I think is most important about this story on the second Sunday after Easter is that we are part of a community that is far greater than us in this time and place, far greater than a Lutheran church in Bozeman, Montana. 
Because this ritual, this peace and sharing of it, dates way back even before Jesus. It is actually a reminder that the peace of Christ is with you. And who doesn't need peace in their lives, right? But we've kind of forgotten why we do that. It's an ancient ritual and greeting, like I said, started even before Jesus. Because in Hebrew, that greeting, peace be with you, means may you be fully well. May you be whole. May you be tied together in wholeness. It's derived from the word um, ero. And so when someone says peace be with you, it is to say, I hope you are well and whole. Well, Jesus took that as sort of what his greeting was. But think about it where we have it in our service. We've come in from whatever our lives have brought us to. We've come in here, we've sat down, we've maybe greeted one another. We've sat down, we've heard God's word. We proclaim our faith. We share our prayers. And then we say this ancient greeting. Peace be with you. It's a reminder for us before we come to the waters or to the table that we are worthy to receive the gift that God has given us through the risen Jesus Christ. So we say it quite a bit, especially us Lutherans and Catholics and a couple of other Protestants. We like saying it a lot. Peace be with you, all that sort of stuff. So with that being said, how many times do you think Jesus actually says the words, peace be with you, in the Gospels? Throw out numbers. Twice? Ten? A lot? Yeah? Would you believe <laughs> if I told you it was only three times? Only three and it's only in the Gospel of John. Yes, he says, my peace I leave with you and all this other stuff. But this command, peace be with you, is only said three times in the Gospel of John. And it is in our lesson today. Jesus says, peace be with you. This is that first post-resurrection story. And it's the first time that the risen Jesus comes face to face with those disciples. Now remember, those disciples are locked up in that upper room that they had shared that last Passover meal with Jesus. They were locked up in the room with the windows barred, the doors locked, because they were fear. They were full of fear and worry. Fear and worry that the Romans might come and do the same thing that they did to Jesus to them. Fear and worry that the chief priests might find them and take them to Pilate as well. Fear and worry because they had just betrayed and denied and watched their teacher die brutally on a cross. And so Jesus comes into the room and what's the first thing he says to them? Peace be with you. May you be whole again. May you be tied to the whole earth. He says it to them twice because he knows they need to hear it. And then he says it one more time that week after when Thomas shows up and reminds them and says, peace be with you. This act of Jesus, we kind of just throw it off because we want to focus on doubting Thomas, right? But I think this is the most important part of this resurrection story that we have. Because it is this peace that Jesus gives to his disciples in that moment that is really the absolution, the forgiveness, the utter mercy given to his disciples. The law and the chief priests, the Roman Empire, would do everything that they could to condemn those 11 that were up in that room. 
they knew this. That's why they were hiding behind those locked doors. But that door, that law, the force of sin that should have separated them from God's love and mercy can no longer bar that unconditional love that Jesus is showing to them through the resurrection of, the, of Christ. Now I want you to think about that. The disciples are faced with fear, but they're also face to face with the one that they deny knowing, the one who they abandoned, the one they betrayed, the one that they watched helplessly die as a criminal. Can you imagine the fear and the guilt and the dismay that they were carrying in that upper room? And yet, and yet, here is Jesus face to face with them, blessing them and telling them that God's wholeness, God's forgiveness is given to each of them right then and there. This past week, Vicar Amy and I were attending the Professional Leaders Conference out at Chico, which happens every week after Easter. And we had the Reverend Paul Oman, uh, who, was, who is an amazing pastor, but also an amazing artist. And he walked us through the Easter stories in a very unique way. But before I tell you more about Paul, I want to invite you to picture yourself in that upper room. The doors are locked. It's dark. There's no light from the outside coming in. You feel the darkness that is pushing down on you, the darkness from the past week, the darkness from the room itself, the stench and the odors of those who had been fearful and living in the same room with one another for days. You hear the world going about outside this business, but nothing is coming in. And suddenly, without using the door, without a flash of lightning or awe-inspiring music in the background, Jesus suddenly simply appears, and you're face to face with the risen Christ. Do you have a picture in your mind? Well, here is what Paul painted for us in front of us in 30 minutes as he told us this story. Josh, would you go to the next slide? What do you notice about this picture? It's dark. And yet the light of Jesus is shining upon each and every one of the disciples. This was after Thomas came back. So you can count there's 11 of them in the room. But they had all gathered in that room and Jesus is showing them his hands and reaching out and saying, peace be with you. May you be whole. That door is no longer foreboding. If you see it right above the right uh, shoulder, or the left shoulder of Jesus, I guess, it's mostly just a couple of slats. That door can no longer hold anything back, and it cannot keep Jesus' mercy away from them. The other thing I love about this picture is that there is actually a direct path to Jesus as if we too ourselves are standing in that room and that mercy and peace and grace is coming directly at us as well. The light is hitting us. We are part of this story of amazing grace. So when Jesus says, peace be with you, it's meant to bring us wholeness through his mercy, through his love, through this grace that we cannot either give ourselves or our neighbors. This peace is something that only Jesus himself can give to us on the other side of the grave. Letting his light lighten our load, lighten the burden of our sins, our failures, our embarrassments. 
when we can truly receive Jesus' peace, our hearts, our souls, our very being are at rest. And we are freed from the weight of God's judgment that should rightly be ours. But it allows us to break free of our own locked rooms so that we too can go and tell the good news of the risen Jesus Christ. When we think about it, we really only can share this with the world when we ourselves have experienced the freedom and love that is given to us. Then we can truly go and share Jesus' peace with the world. We can truly go out and say, peace be with you, and mean that we want the wholeness of God's love and mercy and life be with that person, with the world. So as you look at this picture, as you think of that picture that you drew in your mind's eye, my question for us this week is this. What is keeping you locked up in your faith? What is keeping you worried that you're not worthy of receiving God's love and mercy? What are those fears, those circumstances that you're hiding behind, keeping you from engaging in your relationship with the one who first breathed life into you, who resurrected his son and who promises us wholeness and abundant life? Some may be an easy answer. For some, we may have to think about it for a while. But the good news today is that Jesus already knows what our answers are before we even conceive them. Jesus knows our excuses. Jesus knows our apprehensions. And yet, Jesus still says to each and every one of us, peace be with you. For it's in the waters of baptism where we receive that peace. It's at this table of mercy and grace where we are fed with the one who nourishes us and gives us that freedom for all that the world throws upon us. It is in this community of faith that we are freed to be who we are, to be able to go out into the world and share that peace with one another, just as the disciples did in, in, in our Acts story. They went out and they shared everything because Christ's peace was with them and they shared it with their community. God sees us as we are, calls us beloved as we are. God loves us and forgives us and sends us out to do the same for others. You don't have to have a plastic collar around your neck. You don't have to be wearing a white alb. It is in your way you interact with the world around you, in the way that you build your relationship with God. It is in the way that we help one another to live this abundant life that God calls us to. It doesn't make our life easy. It doesn't take away the pain and the suffering and the struggles that we have, but it reminds us that we are not alone doing this. Jesus walks beside us as he does, as the Holy Spirit is guiding us. God has given us this group of people around us, this community of faith, so that we might be bold to go out and make a difference in this world, to bring God's peace and God's mercy. So friends, today, hear Jesus calling your name. Hear Jesus reaching out and saying, peace be with you. When we share that peace later in the service today, mean it when you say, peace be with you. And see what an amazing gift that part of our liturgy is. We are called to live and to pray and to learn together in this community. Because we are called to live a resurrected life to receive that peace of Christ, to be made whole so that we can go proclaim that Christ is risen. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And with that, we sing our hymn of the day today, which is 
the day, that Easter day with joy was bright. So let us stand and we'll sing ELW 384 verses 1, 2, and 4. And we'd invite you to be seated as we invite the uh, full fold and majority family on up as we get to baptize Lincoln, who is wide awake. So excited. Although his cousin is not, so that's okay. <laughs> you want to come watch? You can help. <laughs> so we are so excited to be here with you all and excited to share this amazing moment with uh, the family and and Lincoln, are you ready? Yeah, I think I think he is. <laughs> so God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And I would invite the congregation, if you want to open up your hymnals, um, we are at, on page 227, which is in the front of the hymnal. So if you'd like to follow along with us. Are you ready, Lincoln? Yeah. Yep, he is. So who, who presents Lincoln to be baptized today? Fantastic. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace of love of, and love of God, do you desire to have Lincoln baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people. Bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the holy scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Lincoln in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit? and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. <laughs> I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Congregation, do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
I believe, I believe in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so may the Lord be with you. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus Christ death and resurrection, you set us free with the power of sin and death and raises us up to life in you. So we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Should we baptize your cousin? Yeah. Okay. All right, Lincoln, here we go. You going to be good? All right. <gasps> Hi. Lincoln Dean, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. All right. Here we go. Let me dry him off a little bit more. And so let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and Holy Spirit you give your children new birth. You cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. We pray that you sustain Lincoln Dean with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And then in the church, um, whenever there was someone who was uh, one of God's anointed, they were always uh, anointed with oil. And so not only do I have a cross on your forehead, we're going to do this. Lincoln Dean, you are now marked with the cross of Christ forever. And now may God always bless you and keep you this day and evermore. Amen. Good job. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We welcome you, Lincoln, into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. We give thanks and praise to God as we together bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And this light is um, his baptismal birthday candle, so um, on April 7th next year, you can light it and be reminded of this beautiful day. And so with that, why don't we all welcome Lincoln Dean into our family. Lincoln, Mom and Dad, this is a place you can test that out. Make sure that everything's in church. And then this space just has the candles and the napkin and the certificates and the books and the blankets, many other things for you as a gift. And it all has to do the similar to his birthday, that uh, you will look through this stuff. You can do it as often as you want to, but at that time to remind him of his mom and you of this great great gift. We'll leave it up to where he can get it from. All right. Can I, can I maybe see if he'll come with me? <gasps> can, I, can I show you off? Can I come show you off to all of our new, our new family members? Can everybody wave? Say hi. Lincoln Dean's our newest brother in Christ with his fancy baptismal suit. And now he's just like, I want to go home and go go to sleep. You did so well. Walk over here. 
Great grandma's here too. Yeah, everybody's here. Everybody wave over here. <gasps> and say hi. Good. Good job. Yes. All right. Fist in the mouth. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. You got it? There you go. And with that, we continue with our prayers of the people. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In the United States. I'm on, but I'm also reverberating. There's feedback. Okay. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that your faith is renewed, and we witness to your love in and for the world. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Help those who nurture trees and crops and all growing things, that you, your people are fed and the earth is sustained. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil to do so in a way that protects and enhances the substrate of life. God of grace, God of grace. your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person. Help us to construct towns and cities that are where no one need to live in fear. God of your grace, yes. your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying for justice. Help us bring an end to racism and other oppression, working for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain. God of grace. God of healing. Be present with those who are lost, who are in despair and who are ill. Help free those who suffer from worry and anxiety. Help the faith of those who call upon you for healing. Be with caregivers as they bring your love and mercy to those in their care. We place those on our prayer list in your healing hands and now name before you those in our hearts and in our minds and with our voices. God of grace, Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Today we remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Lutheran pastor and theologian. Help us to always remember his sacrifice for a better world. And grant peace to those who mourn and bring their comfort, bring them comfort in their memories. God of grace. Now into your hands, O oh gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And let us really share a sign of that peace with one another this day. As you find your way back to the seats and as we've shared the gift of Christ's peace with each other, one of the ways that we do share that peace is with our offering that brings needy things to people in need around the world and here at home. So I ask you to be generous in your giving.
Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we prepare to receive the gift of peace that we've just received, but we receive it at this table, at the baptismal font in this community. And so I'd invite you to stand as you are able as we prepare to eat and drink of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior who is risen. And so let us prepare to receive this gift of grace. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and pray. It is indeed right duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heart, might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it for all to eat. And he said, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup. He blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink. And he said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So remembering his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. And unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, make us bold to call you our Father as we pray the prayer your Son taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread, in the waters of baptism, in this community of faith. Come and eat at God's table. You may be seated. Just a word about communion today. We'll receive it um, as you come forward from in the middle aisle. Um, we have uh, the host. You can either, um, if you need gluten-free, please let us know. We have that as well. Um, receive the red wine or the white grape juice, and then um, discard your cups into the basket, and then return to your seat. And feel free to come and play in the waters of baptism 
and be reminded of your baptism, just as Lincoln was this morning. So come, for all is ready.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us always and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness, to proclaim and to share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. And as we are sent out, um, we have a few announcements for the good of our community this morning. Um, we are starting our Mile Posts of Faith classes uh, starting tonight at 5 o'clock. Some people thought it was 5.30. That was my fault. <laughs> in a way, I had 5.30 in my head. But 5 o'clock tonight, I will go from 5 to 6.30. And then on Tuesday night from 7 to 8.30 and Thursday afternoon from 1 to 2.30. So if any of those times work for you, we'd love to have you come. If you are wanting to get deeper in your relationship with God, if you want to learn a little bit more about the Bible, if you want to learn more about our faith, what does this water mean? What does this table mean? It is a chance for us to get together and really dive into be what it means to be an Easter people. So we hope that you come. No experience necessary, no faith equivalent needed. Just come and find out how much God loves you. So we'd love to see you there. Tonight we'll be um, over in the fireside room at 5 o'clock. What time? Five Great. Dick, do you have some announcements for us? Just a real quick one. Um, our mobile soup kitchen team serves this Saturday. We're all ready to go, but I just always think it's a good idea for the congregation to keep that ministry, both the people that are serving and the people that are in need of a meal, in your prayers. So please keep them in your prayers. Paul, do you have anything? Good morning. Thanks, uh, first of all, we are uh, inviting and encouraging our confirmation families to join us tonight at 5 o'clock for our milepost of faith. That will be our confirmation for the next six weeks. And so um, it's, and I encourage any and all of you to please come. It's going to be a great uh, program. We've spent a lot of time putting it together as a program team. And I really think that anybody and everybody will enjoy it. So if you can't come tonight, we hope to see you Tuesday and or uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, if that works for you. We're offering it that many times specifically so that ev it's accessible to anybody and everybody. So, so please try to come to that. It's going to be a great six weeks together. Um, and that, looking right past that six weeks, um, we are gearing up for Vacation Bible School. And Vacation Bible School is for anybody entering kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, if you're older than sixth grade, um, and there's no cap on older than sixth grade, and you want to be a helper, we are looking for helpers. Um, mainly, we're looking for guides to walk um, students from classroom to classroom, and then to assist our main teachers in, uh, in just making vacation Bible school happen. It's a super fun week. We have crafts and songs and games and Bible stories and all that stuff. Uh, registration is available right now on our website. And I just want to, I'm just looking at the dates really quick because I don't want to say it wrong. Um, it's June 10th through 14th from 9 to noon. So hope that, uh, hope to see you there. And the theme is scuba. So any of you like scuba-ing, like fish, like water, come and be part of it. It's going to be a fun, a fun week. Warren, do you have an announce any announcements? Well, thank you this morning to the wonderful Erica Marie Lee for playing organ and <laughs> and also to our worship band for playing this morning. Yay! Especially for, and I will just humiliate her, for uh, Doretta Johnson for being home from Wales from college and being able to d dive in with us. Um, we are going to be just going back to our regular schedule this week for our choir and our worship band. So if you're interested in joining the choir, we meet from 5.30 to 7 on Wednesday evenings. And then our band is going to be meeting from 7 to 8.30. So if you're interested in participating in one of those, I hope you will. Great. Any other announce? Yes, Corey. So, the, um, so if you were not here last week, there, we still are taking raffle tickets for uh, the Suburban that will go towards uh, ministry for uh, Christicon, which is our camp ministry. And uh, if you are interested in getting those, see Corey Johnson. Go ask him. But first tell him, peace be with you, and then you can talk to him. <laughs> Great. We have a lot of things happening around here, um, a lot of good, good um, 
ministry. So if, if you uh, need to know, look on our Facebook page, look on uh, our website, or just give us a call and we can plug you in. With that, let us receive God's blessing as we go from this place to share God's peace with the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope. Bless you now and always. Amen. And our closing hymn today is Thine is the Glory. So let us stand as we sing 376. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>